Hello and welcome to my YouTube live stream. Welcome everybody. God bless you. God bless you and your families. Nice to have you with us. Thank you for your support. Thank you for joining in. I hope everybody is doing okay. Let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me loud and clear? Give me a one if my sound is loud and clear. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. Welcome and God bless. Guys, today <clears throat> the topic will be Muslims are in denial. Muslims are in denial. Today we're going to prove that and we're going to go in the Islamic sources to show you that Muslims, when they speak, when they debate with you or when they say something, they are actually in denial. They have no clue what they are talking about, right? But before we start, let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ. So we will be guided and speak without any falsehood. Please pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, guide us so we can learn to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son jesus christ glory to his name give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement deception and doubt please lord help us honor you in all our ways lord thank you that when i'm weak you are strong the devil is scheming lord and i know he desires to keep us from spending time with you thank you for your grace and because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved son we Christians are saved. Please give me the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies and deceptions, including taqiyya. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and action. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit to give me the courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For the people who just joined on, God bless you. Thank you for your presence here. Uh, guys, on today's live show, on today's live broadcast, as we said, we will have the opportunity to show you that Muslims are truly in denial with clear evidence from their books. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests, as always in the live chat, about Islam or today's mentioned topics. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. Hopefully we will have Muslims on board. Maybe we will have the honor of an Ustaz or an Imam who will call us live on Skype so we can have a nice and respectful discussion. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Without separation, the Rob Christian. Let me put it also in the text. So let us start today's teaching, guys. Welcome and God bless. Now, if we go to the Quran in chapter 2, Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Al Baqarah, it says in Ayah 41, and believe in what I have sent down, confirming that which is already with you, and be not the first to disbelieve in it, and do not exchange my signs for a small price, and fear me, only me. So Allah is saying basically, here you have to believe you have to believe what has already been sent down right Th which what is that that's the scripture right that's the Injil the Torah so what Muhammad got from Allah which is the Quran it confirms what was already said now Muslims when we ask them about the Bible they say oh the Bible is corrupted the Injil is corrupted the Torah is corrupt but wait a second how can it be corrupted while well, Allah in the Quran is confirming what was sent down so Allah is making sure to tell you that he sent down the Injil and the Torah are you telling me that Allah was a liar he could not keep his Injil and Torah safe from the evil Christians and Jews? <laughs> huh? And he is confirming it, right? You see, this, this, it's in front of you, right? 
And by the way, my signs mean ayat. Ayat, an ayah is a sign, right? From Allah. So, so as you see guys, Muslims when they say the Bible is corrupted, they have no clue what they're talking about. They only repeat the lies and the nonsense of their filthy, deceptive Imams. And the proof is in front of you. And if we go to another ayah from chapter 2, ayah 89, it says, And when there came to them a book from Allah confirming, right? Confirming that which was with them. With who? With the Jews and the Christians. Although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved. So guys, even for a second time, we can see that Allah is making sure to tell you that the Injil and the Torah and the Zabur, which <laughs> they call uh, or, or give another name for the Psalms, right? So Allah is again confirming. I was the one who was sent down the Injil, the Torah and the Zabur. So how do Muslims, without any shame, without any knowledge, dare to say that the Injil, the Torah and the Zabur are corrupted while well, the Quran is confirming them right are you telling me that Allah is stupid for saying that he is confirming the Torah and the Injil how dare you to say that the Bible is corrupted right and the Bible means the book right the holy book Bible comes from the Greek word right and it means book so how dare you Muslims you have truly no shame, you have no dignity when you dare to say that the Injil and the Torah and the Zabur of Allah are corrupted. While the Quran says something else. Either you're going to say, yes, the Bible, the Injil and the Zabur of Allah are corrupted. Or you have to say, Muhammad lied and Allah lied. Right? And later we're going to show you that even Muhammad is swearing when he asks for the Torah. If we continue, again from chapter 2, ayah 78, And among them are unlettered ones who do not know the scripture. Which scripture? The Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, for example, right? Except in wishful thinking, but they are only assuming. So it says basically they are not, be they cannot write and read. No, they, they are spiritually dead you see unlettered right when muslim when we ask the muslims is muhammad illiterate they say yeah he's illiterate but that's false unlettered and the proof is in front of you guys unlettered means someone who does not know the scripture very well do you, do you see it and we can also show you from sahih al-bukhari that muhammad was asking for a pen and paper to write something down so that muslims will not go astray. You remember the, uh, the hadith, guys? I think we have shown it to you many times over, right? That Muhammad could actually write and read. So unlettered ones are the ones who do not know the scripture. Did you catch it? Ummiyun, right? Ummiyun. So Muhammad is an ummi. He didn't have the scripture of Allah yet. This is why he's called ummi, right? Ummi, he is spiritually dead. Muhammad was spiritually dead before receiving the Quran. That's what Ummi, that's what illiterate can also mean in the Arabic, right? And I've showed you in a different lecture before that Ummi can have three meanings in Arabic. It means someone who is spiritually dead, someone who is actually illiterate, and someone who is part of an Ummah. Right? An ummi is part of an ummah, which means nation. Right? You are part of a nation. But as you see here in front of you, unlettered ones, ummiyun, and in this case Muhammad, he is an ummi. He is unlettered who does not know the scripture because he was a little pagan. He was a nice little pagan boy at that time, right? Before receiving the Quran of the moon god Allah. So, who to those who write the scripture with their own hands then say this is from Allah? You see? So the, the unlettered ones, the Ummiyun, right? They claim that they know, they wish that they know, or they're thinking that they know the scripture. But th those 
illiterate ones, those spiritual dead ones, they claim that they write the scripture with their own hand and say this is from Allah in order to exchange it for a small price. Now pay attention guys. Are you with me? Give me one if you are with me. Give me a one in the text if you are with me guys. I hope you are still following, right? I know this can be really uh, difficult. How many times, how many times have you seen this ayah given from the Muhammadans to you, right? Showing you that you Jews and Christians, you have corrupted the Bible, right? You have corrupted your scripture. And, they, and it says in order to exchange it for a small price, especially this part, right? Right? But they, they, they are not showing you the ayah before. Do you see the ayah before? Among them are unlettered ones. The ones who claim they know the scripture. It does not say or it does not talk about that the Bible is corrupted. No, no. Right? It's saying that those unlettered ones. Right? So, write, guys. Listen to my advice. Write chapter 2 down. Seven, Ayah 78 and Ayah 79. Because when they are going to give you 79, go back to 78 and blast them away with it. Spank them with their own lies that the Bible is corrupted. Because it's not talking about the actual Jews and Christians who know the scripture by heart. Right? But it's talking about people who are spiritually dead, unlettered ones who claim to know the scripture. Right? And it's not talking about the Bible. Do you see it? The Bible is not corrupted. No, those are the, the scripture, right? That those unlettered people are writing, right? So basically, I claim, right? For example, I'm claiming that I know the Bible. I write something down from, from the Bible and I say, hey, look, 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 this is what the Bible teaches. Well, I'm lying. I'm a false teacher, right? Do you understand what's happening here? So it's talking about people who are spiritually dead. They don't have the truth. It's not talking about the Bible at all. So don't ever let them fool you guys. Do you see it? So when they, whenever they give you chapter 2, Ayah 79, and they will, when you debate them about if the Bible is corrupted or not, just go back and show them, no, no, you have no clue what you're talking about, you Muhammadan, you evil deceiver. Why are you not reading from 78? Read it. Then continue and show them, that they have no clue what they are talking about. So like I said, you know, Muslims are really in denial. They have no clue what they are talking about. Right? Their Imams are deceiving them and they go immediately to Ayah 79. Do you see it? Do you see it, guys? Uh, please, if you did not follow what I just said, give me a three. Did you get, catch it? If you, if you did catch it, give me a one. If you didn't catch it, give me a three. Right? I just want to be sure that you guys are getting what I'm trying to teach you here. Did you catch it? Hope you caught it, guys. So, guys, when I, when I used to um, learn about Islam, I used to take a notepad, right? And write these things down, because how would you ever know how to answer a Muslim if you have no idea what the Quran is saying, right? So, let me give you the link, guys. Bookmark it, uh, write, some, write something down, guys. I mean, always make sure when we teach, not only me, when Christian Prince teaches or when Sam Shimon teaches, make sure to write things down so you can use them in your debates with Muslims, right? Use them with those poor victims of, of Islam. They are victims, right? They are truly victims. And the proof is in front of you. I have challenged, guys, for the last 15 years that I'm doing this, debating shiuch, debating imams, for the last 15 years we, we were asking Muslims, show us just one ayah where it says that the Bible is corrupted. Show me one ayah where it says that the Injil is corrupted. Show me one ayah where it says that the Torah is corrupted. Show me one ayah where it says that the Zabur, which they call the Psalms, right? Show me. Until today they cannot show us, right? They cannot show us from the Quran. Damaging, isn't it, guys? Uh, Michael, Michael Leo, what didn't you did not get? You gave me a three. Michael Leo, what did you not understood? Can you type it in a text so I can explain it to you? What did you not get? I mean, we are live and we are here to explain to you things. 
maybe sometimes it's difficult. Can you tell me in the text, Michael Leo, what you did not understood? Is he still with us? Michael, are you still with us? Exactly, IV make Mike. You know, this is how why it's important to understand. You know, the Quran is the worst book ever made. It's all over the place, right? It's all over the place. Sometimes it's talking about women, then suddenly it's talking about war. And then two verses later or two eyes later, it's talking about women again. It's a really garbage book, right? The Quran, the one who wrote the Quran was really drunk or he was using hashish or gut. You know, in Yemen and uh, Somalia, they love to chew on gut, right guys? Day and night. So I think the guy who was writing the Quran, the Quranic ayahs, he was really uh, high. He was stoned, right? Yeah, the relationship between 78 and 79. Michael Leo, pay attention, my friend. When Muslims, when you ask Muslims, show me one verse, one ayah from the Quran. Pay attention, Michael. Show me one ayah where it says that the Bible is corrupted. They will go immediately to chapter 2, right? Chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow. And they give you 79. And it says, so woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands. Then say, this is from Allah in order to exchange it for a small price. And they most of the time, they stop here. Right? They stop here with price and then dot. They say, look, they're, they're in, in, in their debates with you as a Christian, they will say, look, this means the Bible is corrupted. What they don't know, what they don't realize, because they are talking out of ignorance and that and because their imams are telling them about this, they don't go a verse before. Because if you go back an ayah before, you go to 78, it says, among them, who are them? Those are the Jews and the Christians, right? And among them are unlettered ones. So Jews and Christians who, act, who are actually false Christians. Uh, Jews and Christians who claim to be Christians but they are actually not real Christians right who do not know the scripture so Jews and Christians who do not know the scripture and especially the Jews because this is mainly talking about the Jews right who do not know the scripture except in wishful thinking and unlettered ones ummiyun right means someone who is spiritually dead right someone who does not know the Bible he does not know the Jewish Bible, right? For example, the, the, let's say the Torah. But he claims to know it, right? So they are only assuming. So basically false teachers, false Jews, right? Then it continues. So woe to those who write the scripture. So those spiritually dead ones, the unlettered ones. Did you catch it now, Michael? Did you now catch it? So it's not talking about the Bible at all. Guys, thank you for your donation. God bless you. Thank you very much for your support and your donation. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. So it's not talking about the Bible at all. It's talking about the unlettered ones who claim to know the Bible. Did you catch it now? Give me one if you caught it, Michael. Give me one in the text if you now finally understood my teaching about these two ayahs. So they wrote the scripture down. So those so-called Jews and Christians, especially the Jews, because this is talking about the Jews, who wrote the scripture down, let's say the Torah, but those are spiritually dead Jews. They have no clue what they're talking about, right? False Jews. It's talking about the false Jews. It's not talking about the Bible, right? So who to those who, the unlettered ones, fake Jews who write the scripture down with their own heads then say this is from Allah right in order to exchange it for small price so they are liars they are deceivers they are spiritually dead did you catch it did you not catch it guys it's easy right when you can read it in context this is the context of both ayahs right this is the context you see how how Important is when they give you this ayah, 9 out of 10 times, guys, they will go to this ayah, 
right? How many times have they given you this iron? Many times, right? <laughs> Just go back and exp bring the hammer down on, the, on their heads, right? You see, so nowhere in the Quran, guys, I challenge any Muslim. I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me one ayah from the Quran where it says that the Bible is corrupted. If you can show me, I will delete my YouTube channel and I'll stop teaching on YouTube. That's my challenge for the Muslims. Yeah, it's cherry picking. Exactly, Marcus Stembeck. It's cherry picking at best. Why are you not reading it into context? You know, how many times do Muslims say, you have to read it in context? Well, we are going back to the context, you deceivers, you evil Satan worshippers. Yeah, break down the hammer of Thor. Exactly, Marion. <laughs> On their heads. You know? You see, how, you, you see how easy it is to expose these people? You see it? Let us continue, guys. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> let us continue. Right? And again, actually, the Quran does not show you any ayah. There is no ayah in the Quran where it says that the Bible is corrupted. Actually, it's the opposite. If you go to chapter 3, Surah Ali Amran, chapter 3, ayah 3, it says, He who Allah has sent down upon you the book in truth, confirming what was before it. And he revealed the Torah and the gospel. You see it? So the Quran will never say that the, the Torah and the gospel are corrupted, which is they call the Injil, right? Well, Injila, right? Actually, it's confirming it to be the truth. In truth, right? So all the books of Allah are true, right? So when you as a Muslim claim that the Bible, which is the Gospel, the Torah, right? And the rest of the books that are inside the Bible. When you say the Torah and the Injil are corrupted as a Muslim, you are basically calling Allah and Muhammad liars. So you are a munafiq, hypocrite, fake Muslim. And the proof is in front of you. Are you with me, guys? You see, you see how easy it is, guys? If you read it this way? It's easy, right? So, just, just you know, when they, when they show you these eyes, when they show you, like we showed you, eye 79, Put 78 in their faces. Ask them, why are you not reading from here? Right? And continue, go to chapter 3, ayah 3. Show them that they are actually fake hypocrite Muslims when they say that the books of Allah are corrupted. Give them the ball back. Don't go to the Holy Bible, guys. Right? Don't go immediately to the Holy Bible and go to the book of John or uh, Matthew or Luke. Right? Stay, stay with them, give them the ball back, show them these ayahs, right? This is why it's important, guys, to actually take notes when we teach. You know, when you're going to make it not very easy on yourself, when you are going to prove <laughs> Christianity from the Bible, nay, no, stay on topic with them, stay on topic. When they are talking about corruption of the Bible, sh ask them, show me. When did the corruption happen? Where did the corruption happen? And in which ayah can we find the so-called corruption? Right? So let us continue, guys. Here is more damaging stuff. Now we are going to actually put the nail on the coffin of the Muslims. Why? Here is why. If we go to chapter 5, guys, chapter 5, ayah 47. Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, ayah 47. Take notes, guys, please. If we read this ayah, let me read it. And let the people of the gospel, who are the people of the gospel, people? To the, to the audience, who are the people of the gospel? Who are those? Ahl al-Injil, who are those? Jason says, me. You is me, me is you, who is me? Christians, thank you. 
No, no, those are the Christians, not the Jews, Zukmida. It says the gospel, right? The people of the gospel. This is, these are not the Jews, the Christians. Yes, thank you. So, and let the Christians, the people of the gospel, judge by what Allah has revealed and therein. And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed in what? In the gospel, then it is those who are deviantly disobedient. Now, what is this ayah saying, guys? What is this ayah saying? It says, if you as a Christian don't judge, but what Allah revealed inside the gospel, you are a fake Christian. Wait a second. Here we found a really damaging thing. When Muhammad, this is Muhammad who is fabricating these ayahs, right? There's nothing called Allah, right? When Muhammad put this in the Quran, this ayah, he really busted and spanked himself. Why? Here is why. Take notes, guys. Because if you are a Christian, you are the people of the gospel. You as a Christian, if you have to judge by what Allah has revealed inside the gospel, you have to completely reject Islam. You have to reject Allah. And you have to reject the Quran. Why? Because the Injil actually contradicts the book of Allah. It contradicts Muhammad. It contradicts Allah himself. Why? Because our holy God, our living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the father of mankind, right? Right? That's number one. Number two, Jesus is the Messiah, the living word who came into the flesh, the eternal word of God who became flesh. Now, if you have to judge, now take notes, guys. If you have to judge by all of that that I just mentioned, you have to reject Muhammad, you have to reject the Quran, and you have to reject uh, Allah. You have to throw away Muhammad and call him nothing but a fake prophet. Boom! Here's the nail on the coffin of Muhammad. So, chapter 5, guys, chapter 5, ayah 47, is a damaging disaster that Muhammad created for himself and the Muslims. Good grief. Jane Miller is saying good grief. So you see how important this ayah is, guys, to use against Islam. Use against Muhammad and the Muhammadans who are suffering, suffering really actually from Abdulism. And we know that Abdulism kills brain cells. Muslims need to wake up. So, according to this ayah, if we Christians have to judge by our holy gospel, that means we have to reject Allah because it contradicts Allah, it contradicts the teaching of Islam, it contradicts the Quran, and it contradicts Muhammad. Boom! Take notes, guys. Chapter 5, let me scroll back. Chapter 5, ayah 47. Right? Oof, oof, oof. Yes. You see, if you are a Muslim, this is problematic for you. This is a huge, huge disaster and dilemma as a Muslim. If I was a Muslim and I would read this ayah and understood what this ayah is saying, I would not have stayed a Muslim for a split second. You see how huge this is, guys? This is really important, guys, to know. Use these facts and the proof is in front of you that Islam is nothing but a fake cult, right? Man-made cult, because if this was not a cult, how would you, as a fake prophet, not bust yourself like this, right? It's huge, it's damaging. Help me to help you use this information, guys. Bookmark it, save it, do whatever you need to do, right? Abdel Haliga, I don't know, you tell me, how do they even read it? You tell me, I mean, read it, it's in front of you, right? Read it, as a Muslim, if you're a Muslim, read it. And let the people of the gospel judge, by what? By what Allah has revealed therein, in what? In the gospel. But wait a second, if I as a Christian have to judge, but by the gospel, right? I have to reject Allah, I have to reject Muhammad, and I have to reject Islam and the Quran, because my holy gospel, my holy Injil, completely, 200% contradicts the Islamic teaching. Uh -huh. 
thank you, thank you, Muhammad, for putting this ayah down in the Quran because now I can use it against you in the court of law. And this today is the court of law, guys. I am using it against you in the court of law. Boom. This is your nail on the coffin. Right? Let it go, let it go. <laughs> let us continue, guys. <laughs> I mean, really, 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 guys. Muslims, really? Really? How can you stay a Muslim if you read this stuff? Here, this Abdul, who is suffering from Abdulism, Mr. Freebie, he came to uh, say only Allahu Akbar. He has no clue what we are doing here, what our teaching is. Abdul, stay here, be nice. And maybe you will learn about Islam. Yeah, this is Da'if Ayah, Abdul Haliga. I think this is a Da'if Ayah. Right? <laughs> Lord of mercy. Let us continue, guys. Let us not waste our time with this freebie. Right? If we go to Sunnah Nabi Da'ud, guys. If we go to Sunnah Nabi Da'ud. Let me give you the reference. This is a Hassan Hadith. Sunan Abi Dawood Hadith number 4449. Let me give you the link. Copy it. Save it. Bookmark it. Whatever you, would, you need to do. Guys, you know what's good? You can uh, actually, uh, when you do bookmarkings, uh, make folders. Right? Well, that's what I do. Make folders. Put these Hadiths or Ayahs or the links, you know. Bookmark them under a name, give them the folder a name so you can find them very easy back, right guys? Right? So bookmark them so you can use them, right? The next time. So narrated Abdullah ibn Umar, a group of Jews came and invited the messenger of Allah. Allah is praying on Muhammad. Still, Allah is praying. We don't know to who, but Allah is praying. Tuquf. So he visited them in their school. They said Ab Abu al-Qasim. That's basically the nickname of Muhammad, right? Another nickname for Muhammad. Abu al-Qasim, the father of Qasim. One of our men has committed fornication with a woman, right? So here, what's happening here, guys? The Jews came to Muhammad. The Jews came to Muhammad. Guys, please try to follow what I'm saying here. The Jews are coming to Muhammad and they are uh, complaining to Muhammad. One of the Jews committed adultery or fornication with a woman, right? So pronounce judgment upon them. So pronounce judgment upon the woman and, and the man. They placed a cushion. Now look what's happening here, guys. They placed a cushion for Muhammad, Allah play, praying on him, who sat on it. So Muhammad was sitting on the cushion and said, and this is basically the judge cushion, right? Because Muhammad was king and judge, right? And said, bring me the Torah. So Muhammad is asking for the Torah, guys. Muhammad is asking for the Torah. So it was then brought. So they brought him the Torah. So question Muslims, how dare you, without any shame, without any dignity or honor, how dare you to say that the Torah is corrupted? Clearly, Muhammad had access to the Torah. The Torah was in his, in his hands. So how do you dare to claim that the Torah is corrupted? You Muslims are ignorant or you have no shame, you have no dignity, you have no honor because you clearly know that the Torah is not corrupted and the proof is in front of you. I mean, if the Torah was corrupted, why would Muhammad ask for the Torah, right? That's the one million dollar question. Why would Muhammad ask for the Torah if the Torah is corrupted and he's going to judge from the Torah right so he's now he's going to judge look guys he's going to judge from the Torah he then would withdraw the cushion from under beneath him and place the Torah on it saying now here Muhammad starts to swear Muhammad he now is swearing I believe in thee in what in the Torah so clearly Muhammad believed in the Torah but Muslims say Muhammad is a liar and the Torah is corrupted. You see, they are calling Muhammad a liar. Muhammad is being called liar by the Muslims of today. Right? 
Well, you are making my job, Muslims, you are making my job easy when you say that the Bible is corrupted, the Torah is corrupted, the Angel is corrupt, because you are calling your own prophet a liar, right? You are calling Muhammad a liar. So Muhammad is swearing on the Torah, I believe in thee, the Torah, and in whom he, who revealed thee. So he's believing in Allah, he's swearing on the Torah, and he says, I believe in you, the Torah, and the one who sent you down, which is Allah in this case. He then said, bring me one who is learned among you. Then a young man was brought, he transmitted and mentioned the rest of the tradition of stoning similar to the one transmitted by Malik from Nafi. So basically, the two Jews, the man and the woman, were stoned to death, and Muhammad was judging from the Torah, because one of the laws of the Torah is if you commit fornication or adultery, you have to be stoned. Remember? That was back in the old Mosaic law, right? You remember? The Mosaic law has 613 laws, right guys? Mosaic law. The Jews had many laws, right? The Israelites had many laws. And this one, one of them. You have to stone people who commit adultery or fornication. So Muhammad actually believed in the Torah. Guys, use this hadith. Help me to help you. When Muslims claim that the Bible is corrupted, slam this hadith in their face because this is a Hassan good hadith. Right? It's good. Let us continue. If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, this is Sahih al-Bukhari guys, you see it? Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, hadith number 12. Let me give you the link. This is not my book, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, 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 right? Narrated Abu Hurairah, the people of the scripture, the Jews, used to recite the Torah in Hebrew, and they used to explain it in Arabic to the Muslims. On that, Allah's Messenger said, do not believe the people of the scripture or disbelieve them, but say, we believe in Allah and what revealed to us. You see, even Muhammad says the Torah is not corrupted. Did you catch it, guys? Muhammad did not dare to say that the Torah is corrupted. He said, don't believe them, but also, you know, don't say we don't believe you. Don't say it. Just say we believe in Allah and what Allah sent down. Which, what, did, what did Allah send down? The Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, and the Quran, right guys? Right? So how dare you Muslims to say, and call your own prophet a liar, Ali Mirza, why do you Muslims call Muhammad a liar, while Muhammad says that what is revealed to everyone is also the Torah? Another good one, right guys? How dare you to call Muhammad a liar, Abdul? Are you suffering from schizophrenia? I know, you know, Islam actually does kill brain cells and the proof is in front of you. How dare you to call your own prophet a liar? Well, your prophet believed in the Torah, believed in the Injil, believed in the Zabur, which they call the Psalms. What a bust, what a bust. Oof, oof, oof. Right? Oof, oof, oof. Lord of mercy. So when you actually, what we are trying to show you today, guys, what we are trying to teach you, when you call yourself a Muslim, you should never ever dare to say that Muhammad is a liar because Muhammad actually believed in the Torah. He believed in the Injil and the Psalms. Right? But Muslims in 2019 have no clue about Islam. They have no clue when they call their own prophet a liar. Give them the ball back, guys. Don't go to the Bible. You can give them the Bible from now till until kingdom come, but they will not accept it anyway. Just go back to their Islamic sources. Give them the hadith. Give them the eyes that we mentioned, right? They are actually calling Muhammad a liar when they say that the Bible is corrupted. 
Because Muhammad never said that the Bible is corrupted. Never. Neither did Allah say it in the Quran. Allah actually confirmed it and he's saying, I'm the one sending it down. Right? What did Muhammad say actually? He said, we believe in Allah and what is revealed to us. So don't say, don't say to them, do not believe the people of the scripture or disbelieve them, but say, we believe in Allah and what Allah revealed to us. Right? They cannot say, you know, here, this is the Sahaba guys, right? These are the companions of Muhammad. So the companions of Muhammad, actually 1400 years ago, did not dare to say the Bible is corrupted. They did not dare to say that the Injil and the Torah are corrupted. But Muslims of today, they know better than the companions and they know better than Muhammad and they love to call the Sahaba and their prophet a liar. Right? I don't know Abdul Haliga. I have no clue, my friend, how they pass through the madrasa. You know, Islam is a nice scam, right? So imams, they won't show them these kind of hadith. They will not explain the Quran as we do to them. You know, Islam is a big business for the imams. You know, if you have seen the BBC documentary about Mut'a, you have seen that the imams are nothing but pimps. They are pimping out Muslim girls, little girls, for money. Islam is a huge business for the Imams. Huge business. Ali Mirza, if you, if you are a truly a Muslim, call me on Skype. Guys, this Ali Mirza guy, I've spanked him. I've totally annihilated him in a debate on Skype. You can find my debate with him under my videos. He does not dare to call me ever again because he know he will get spanked for the second time. You don't want to waste time this time. You want me to play the video? Guys, do you want me to play a small part of, of our, my debate with him? I will, do, I will do it in the end, no problem. <laughs> I, will not, uh, you know, I will not embarrass him now. I will embarrass him later. Play it? Okay. He wants me to play it, guys. Okay, no problem. He wants me to show everybody how he got spanked badly. Alright? Oh, Ali Mirza. Okay. <clears throat> Just a second. Let me get the link for you. Let me start from the beginning. In Bade me. He's trying with your mates. This is the okay. same guy, right? I'm with my mates. Abdul, sure. We can debate on Skype. Abdul, can you give me your real Skype ID? I cannot find you with Mr. Bond UK. Okay, so he's Bond. James Bond. It's me. Let me, let me, you so, know. Yeah. So then he's the Skype. Or you want to debate using a false name. Something that you got a point with that? You got a point? Well, yeah. why are you why are you are you, are you are you are you trying to be a coward or what? So are you trying to be a knob? Are you are, did you did you call me to mock me or you want to debate? Are What's, you trying to be a knob? Are you trying to be a dickhead? What are you trying to be? Uh, well, your prophet was all of that, so don't call me that, okay? If you want to debate, be respectful, prophet, else I will ban you. Prophet, no way. Don't bring the prophet in the way, okay? Okay. So, do, so, so respect yourself, respect yourself, listen, listen, I'm, and let I'm, us I'm, debate, else I will kick you and ban you. What about that? Little immigration from some, somewhere in Arab country, right? You call yeah. this Arab country, right? Come to the point. I, do you want to debate me, yes or no? No, this is between me and you now. It's got okay. no debate. It's got nothing let us debate. Let no, us debate. Let us debate. Let us debate. I have a question. I have a question. You you okay. you challenge me for the debate. I'm here. I answered your call, right? Okay. I have a question. I have a question. Does Allah enter His creation? Yes or no? Yes, He does. Allah is a creator. Does He? I know He's creator. Listen carefully to my question. Does Allah enter His creation? Yes or no? Yes, He does. How? 
It says in the Quran, in the Holy Quran. How? Can you show me? Because Muslims, Muslims say Allah does not enter his creation. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Okay? You study the Quran, so you should know. You study the Quran, haven't you? You must no wait. You Muslims say you Muslims say Allah does not enter his creation. So you're not a Muslim. You're not a you're not a Sunni Muslim, are you? I am a Sunni Muslim. I'm still studying my Quran, but I don't know. I'm not a professor or scholar or anything. Okay. I'm a bit honest with that. So, 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 so you don't know much about Islam. Is that what you're saying? I'm not Quran Hafiz. I'm not Quran Hafiz. I'm telling you, I will not be some bobs about uh, the basic part of Islam. But I want like I'm not too high level in the scholar. Like okay, you, okay, you, you, okay, you, okay, you, okay, you, okay, 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 okay. Answer the question. Answer the question. Wait, does does Allah speak? does Allah enter His creation? Yes, or, yes or no? Allah does enter His creation. Okay, yes, how? Yes. Okay, how? You're asking two hard questions that I won't even able to answer. So you think you can debate me? You can't answer one question. Listen. I'm on the phone, right? I'm only here to speak to you. Why are you picking up Muslim who can't even speak English? So you you called me you called me to to say why I'm why I'm destroying Muslims during debates. Why? why what kind of? Debate? Why don't you debate people who are proper scholars? That's why you called me to ask me this yes, question. That's why I called you. Go and debate proper scholars. Because you're okay. Let me answer. Your scholars are hiding. They are hiding from me. They are hiding from Christian Prince. No, 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 they are no, hiding no, no. from David no, Wood. They no, are no, no. they are hiding from Sam Shimon. No, no, no. They are scared to debate us. Not hiding from you. You are hiding from them. How did I? Hiding. Didn't I pick up the phone? Listen, listen. Didn't I pick up the phone? How am I hiding? How am I hiding? You are hiding on you sitting on your laptop. I'm okay. hiding. You want to debate Would me? You? Listen, listen, your scholars. Listen, your your Imam, your Imam. Does he want to debate me? Does he want to date me or does he want to debate me? You are saying on YouTube, I'll burn your crown. How would you feel? And that is very bad, my friend. I, what, what did I say? Wait, what, what did I say? What did I say? You say on YouTube, yeah. on videos, how would you feel if I burn your crown? No, that's not what I said. No, 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 that's what you said. No, I said, I said, if we burn Quran on the street of London, how many Christians? That was a question to a Muslim. You cannot focus. That's not my problem. You didn't read or listen to the video. I said, if I burn one Quran on the street of London, how many Christians will die? How many Christians will die in Pakistan? So you didn't watch the video. Go watch the video. Don't come back. Okay. So don't put words in my mouth. Shame on you. You are immigration to London yourself. Why are you calling Pakistan immigration? That's not what I said. Again, oh, listen, the, listen, 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 Abdul, Abdul. Again, let me repeat. Let me repeat. Focus. Stop. Listen. Put down. Put down the shisha. Stop yeah. smoking hashish. I said during the video. During the video. During the video. During the last video. My debate. With, listen. 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 I said to that guy, to that Muslim guy in my debate, Yusuf Ali. I was debating Yusuf Ali. I asked him. If I burn a Quran on the street of London, how yes. many people who are Christians will die on the streets of Pakistan? He said many. He even confirmed that. He said, yes, it's I mean, true. It's if you burn one Quran on the street of London, Christians are causing trouble against them. at least 10 Christians can... will die on the streets of Pakistan. Do you, can you deny that? No. It happened. Yeah. It happened, right? Yeah. They burned yeah. churches for that. Yes, that's common fact. That's natural. We are Allah believers. We are soldiers of Allah. If you touch our ground, okay. If you're a soldier, answer the question. The way you are Jesus of soldiers, we are Jesus of Allah. Simple. Okay, but we but we don't burn people alive or uh, crucify people or stone people to death if you mock Jesus. Don't, don't that's, give me that shit. So don't don't give me that don't, shit. Don't, give me that shit. don't don't yeah. use bad language or I'll block you. Okay. It's from the ball same way. So respect so, yourself. Know, respect so, yourself. So respect that. yourself. Okay, Abdul, mean, Abdul, 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 Abdul. Easy, easy, like easy, easy. easy. Don't cry. Don't yeah. cry. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Listen. Again, let me again answer the. Uh, sorry, ask the, the question. Does Allah enter His creation? Yes, I know, and why? That question, does Allah enter? Look, this is not about Allah Taala, right? No, no, no. About, no, you called me. You, you called me. You called me because you said I'm a coward. I picked up the phone. I'm not a coward. I'm talking to you. Answer the question. 
Listen, no, answer the question. With the proper scholar. Okay, bring me, bring me, bring me a scholar. Bring me a scholar. Bring me a scholar. Bring me a scholar. Bring me a scholar who can answer this question. Bring me a scholar. Ali, they will call Muhammad the Jab. They will call, you know. Okay, bring them. Okay, bring them. Bring them. No, they don't have people with time dictated time like you. You're a waste of time. You're a waste of time. You 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 called me. You called me for nothing. Bye, man. Bye. Get me your scholar. You have my Skype ID. Get me your scholar and call me. Bye, bye. Okay. You can do nothing. We are spanking you. It will chop off my hand. Did you hear it? Day and night, you can't do anything. You you only have bad words. Like your prophet who said, "Go bite on the penis of your forefathers if you're proud about a jahiliya." So just go, 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 go. This is how abuse if your fucking words are. Coward. He called me, as you saw, guys, he called me to use bad language. He didn't call me to debate. Muslim. He can't even answer one question. I asked him a simple question. Does Allah... Don't call me, coward. Don't call me. I'm not picking a, a phone to waste my time with. Guys, I'm going to give him Bring a second chance. Watch, watch. Time. It's not over yet. And try to call me, okay? So, I hope next time he will call me with a share. Because this is a waste of time. He called me to mock me. That's it. okay. Let's see. Let's see what he has to say. Let me give him one chance. Let me pick up the phone. What do you want, Abdul? No, listen. Uh, let's uh, let's have a powerful conversation now. Okay. Okay. okay answer right. the question. Does Allah enter what? His creation? Yes. Okay. How? How? Yeah, how? What do you mean how? Can you uh, show me the ayah? Can you show me the ayah from the Quran and the Hadith? It, well, the earth and the heavens, it says in the Quran already, like you know, you've seen it, but you guys don't believe it. If I haven't showed you... Okay, you show me the ayah. Show me the ayah where it says that Allah enters creation. Yeah, I will show you the ayah. It's okay, in, show uh, me. It's in Atikursi as well. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim allahu la ilahi al-Qayyim la-tahu zusinatuhu al-Nom lahum Yeah, blah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you give me the ayah number and chapter number, please? Yeah, I'll give the ayah number and chapter number okay, if you okay. want. Okay. okay. Which chapter? What is the chapter number? I'm waiting, man. Yeah, one second, bro. I'm not by the keyboard, warrior. Uh, last time I checked, you all Muslims always say you memorize the Quran by heart. What what happened? I thought Okay. So, Allah, there is no God, but He is the living, the self missing the eternal. No Give me the chapter number and ayah number. And why did you change your name to Akram now this time? Sorry? A couple seconds ago you were Mr. Uh, Bond. Now you are Mr. Air Akram. Why, now, now, why, why, are you so, why are you so bothered about the name? Just the name, man. You keep, you keep my name. I keep yeah, I name. wonder why. I, why are you changing in your name every second? Are you afraid? Are you a dickhead? To tell me, are you a dickhead? Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a dickhead like your prophet, okay? Shut up then. If you want to debate. Okay, debate, give me I'm the ayah. Give me the ayah. Give me the ayah. Give me the ayah. Abdul, give me the ayah. Give me the ayah. What's your fucking problem? I gave yeah. you a chance. Oh, give me the ayah now. Give me the ayah to back up what you say. Because you're the only Sunni Muslim I know who says Allah enters creation. Yeah, you, you went to some You're the only, listen, you're the only Sunni guy who says that Allah enters creation. But yeah, they don't even know bastards properly. You go to them people to debate with them. Yeah, okay, show me. I'm waiting. Okay, I'm, yeah, there you go. Okay, Abdul, show me. <laughs> Stop calling me names, by the way. If you call me in one time again a name, I will ban you. Be respectful. I'm, I don't use bad language. Don't... Use bad language with me, okay? Respect yourself. Uh, don't don't act like your prophet. What's the chapter number? That's a screenshot of the sky, okay? Have a look at yourself. No, no, no. You give me the chapter number. The living, the self, the sustainer. What is the chapter number and I number? Abdul, don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Give me the chapter number and ayah number. Bro, this is the verse of the Quran. Okay, give it to me. Give it to me. I'm waiting. Fine. 
This is a recite of the Quran. Okay, give me the chapter number, Ayn. Don't waste my time. Okay, I'm good. Chapter number, yeah, I will give you the chapter number. Hold on. Okay. Good. Finally. I'm still waiting, man. Come on. Chapter 2, what? Chapter 2 and then chapter I... Two. Yeah? Chapter 2, 255. 255, okay. Yes. Let's see. Chapter 2, Ayah 255, right? Yeah, 255? 255, yes, brother. I'm okay, okay. okay, let me read it. Allah, there is no deity except Him, the yes. ever living, the sustainer of all existence. Yes. Neither drowness overtakes Him nor sleep. To Him belongs whatever is in the heaven and whatever is on the earth. Who is it that can intercede with Him except by His permission? He knows what is presently before them and what will be after them. A day encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. His kursi extends over the heavens and the earth and their per preservation tires him not. And he's the most high, the most great. Okay, where does it say he enters creation? Continue it with the full chapter. Don't just read the one chapter. You give me the ayah. This is the ayah. Where does it say Allah enters creation? Where? You know that you are the only Sunni Muslim who believes this, right? What? According to... All the Muslims, Allah does not enter his creation. So you're not a Muslim, my friend, when you think that. I am a Muslim, my friend. Astaghfirullah, okay. what are you talking about? Because you say Allah enters his creation. You can't judge with the one. You're trying to say Sunni Muslims are not Muslims. No, you, you, you. I'm not talking about all the Sunni Muslims. I'm talking I about you. I, I, brother, I gave you the fucking full push. Yeah, full push this is chapter, this is chapter... Two, 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 five, five. This yeah, where does it say Allah enters creation? Where does it say that? Okay, where does it say he's, he enters his creation? That's everything that says all in everything, one verse. Okay, it doesn't say that. Where? Yes. Show me where. In the Ayat Kursi, that explains it all, brother. His Kursi extends over the heavens and the earth. Where does it say he enters the earth? He uh, enters the earth. That's in the Hadith, it says. He so, the, so, uh, in, so, so, according to your, according to your knowledge of Islam, of the you're the only Muslim who says that Allah does not enter his creation. Which Muslim, which Muslim says that? All the Muslims say that. Except all you. All the Muslims. Which yeah. All the Muslims. Can, can, you, you, can, you call, can you call your Imam? Do you have the number of your Imam, please? Can you call no, him and say, no, and yeah. ask him, does Allah enter his creation? I don't need to go to no Imams. I don't believe Why? in Imams. Oh, you because don't believe? Muslim, who told you, who told you? Who told you Islam? I learned the Quran myself. I who taught you Islam? Imam. I learned the Quran. I learned the mashallah, alhamdulillah, I learned the Quran myself. Okay. Do you, do you accept hadith or what do you accept? We, we, we do accept hadith, yes. We do accept hadith. Okay, uh, we great, say, we great, got great, four great. or five, we got millions of hadith, bro. There's millions of them in the world. You know, not, not just one, not just two. The Shai Bukhari, Shai Muslim. There's a, a, a book of uh, Ibrahim, the book of Daud, David. There's, you know, there's so many of them. We, we Sunni Muslim, we book of, uh, uh, I was having a word in my conversation with my friend. I know what, I'll tell you what, yeah. Okay. My good friend, right, he's a good, uh, most, he's, he's got more knowledge than me. Okay. You know, listen, you listen, know, listen, 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 I'm, do you know IslamQNA.info? Do you know the website? Islam of what? Okay. Let me read from you. Okay. The Quran describes the exaltedness or highness of Allah in different ways as his being high and above and by describing how things come down from him and go up to him and by stating that he's above heaven and it also says that he's above Al-Arsh, right? Above his throne. Yes. So he does not, according to Islam, he does not enter his creation. Why are you lying about your Allah? Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's what, oh, you're saying he doesn't enter his creation. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. 
So, uh, so not, not enter his creation because it does not interact with his creation. So, and, so can can you apologize for lying? The first yes, time? I, I misunderstood. Uh, I misunderstood your concept. Sorry about how, that. How 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 did you misunderstood? How many times did I ask you? Maybe ten times. Uh, many. I was like already. Asking okay. That time. Okay. So 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 you say so you agree that Allah does not enter his creation, right? No, it doesn't. Because okay. The uh, God is unseen. Okay. Okay. God is very Can you hundred percent tell me that Allah does not enter his creation? Can you confirm it, please? Uh, I can't confirm that. I don't Why? Know, but it, you it, just said Allah does not it, enter his creation. It, it not, bro, every Muslim says that uh, Allah does not creation. Okay, Do so I you know, agree. I, so you agree, right? You agree. I agree. Yes. Okay. I agree. Okay. Full stop. End of story. Okay. Great. 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 What about yeah. what about Sah Okay. What about Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih Muslim? It says that Allah mm -hmm. descends every night. He descends to the lowest heaven. What will you do with that? What do you mean by descent? Descent. He he that. comes down. He comes down to the lowest heaven, which is creation. So here we have a contradiction. What are you okay. going to do with that? This is in Sahih al Bukhari, Hadith number one one four five one one four five yeah. and Muslim Sahih Muslim one two six one. And yeah. let me read for you from Abu okay. Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him that the Prophet said, "The Lord descends every night to the lowest heaven." One one mm -hmm. third of the night remains and says, who will call upon me? So Allah does enter his creation because the lowest heaven is a creation of Allah. So yeah, we no, have, so we have here, wrong, so we have a contradiction here. So we have a contradiction here. No, 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 you got the wrong meaning. No, no, no. What he's trying to say, the hadith is, he comes down to the third sky, you know, between the sky. No, no, to the, the lowest, sky. lowest. Yes, yes, yes. The no, first heaven. To, to listen to our prayers. To the first like heaven. The, so he, no, no, he no, does no. enter, he does and enter. No, 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 no. You okay, explain. Okay, explain. Explain. Okay. Okay, explain. Explain the hadith for me. Okay. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I'm hundred percent sure you are misunderstanding that hadith. Can you give me the book one book number and the uh, reference number, please? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sahih al Bukhari. Sahih al Bukhari. Yeah. Hadith number one one four five one one four five. And Sahih Muslim also reports it in hadith number one two six one. Okay. Uh, one one four five. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so he, you do, he, so you don't know about this. So so first, let me summarize what we said. First, you it, you said it, Allah enters creation. Then after ten times, I asked it. Wait, 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 wait. After ten times, listen, listen. After ten times, after ten times, I asked you the same question. You said yes, Allah enters creation. Then I told you that Allah does not enter his creation. You confirmed that you said, I misunderstood you after 10 times. Allah does not enter his creation. Now I'm showing you from both Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim that Allah, according to your prophet, not according to me, according to your prophet, Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven. So Allah enters his creation. So here we have a contradiction. You said, I don't know. Okay, I respect that. Go ask, go ask your Shaykh, go ask your Imam, go ask your friends. Come back and we can discuss about this, okay? Okay, no problem. Okay. 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 Uh, Have a nice day. Have a nice day. You, you, in, be honest, where you do a little research about this on YouTube. Uh, you know, sometimes. Yeah, okay, okay, YouTube. okay. Go, sometimes, listen, listen, listen. Go, 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 go. Just go. Listen, just go do research. Come back, okay? See yeah. you next time. Okay, okay bye, okay, bye. Brother. bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. As you heard, guys, he gave me chapter two. I uh, 250. You see guys, this Abdul was calling me a coward. He was calling me all kind of names in the comment section on YouTube. And when we finally debated, he got spanked left and right. You see, Muslims are truly in denial. That's the topic of today, right guys? Muslims are truly in denial. You know, when you ask any Muslim, does Allah enter his creation? They say, no, no. Allah is above the creation. But according to your prophet, I mean here the prophet is speaking, right? According to the prophet, he said, the Lord descends, he enters every night the lowest heaven. So Allah clearly, according to your prophet, who you call a liar, you know, they love to call Muhammad a liar. 
We showed that to you, right guys, today? How many times did we show you that Muslims are actually calling Muhammad a liar? So according to Muhammad, Allah enters his creation, which is the lowest heaven, which is not heaven number one. Muslims believe in number, uh, heaven number one, heaven number two, all the way to the seventh, right? So Allah enters the lowest heaven, right? One, one third of the night remains and says, who will call upon me? So Allah does enter his creation and all the Muslims are lying to you, right? The proof is in front of you. Are you calling Muhammad a liar, Muslims? Why do you dare, without no shame, without no dignity, say that Allah does not enter his creation? And you heard, you heard Abdul who was suffering from Abdulism. How many times did I ask him, does Allah enter his creation? He says, yes. Then for a third time, yes. Fourth time, yes. You know? Then later he says, no, no, Allah does not enter his creation. Then I show him this hadith. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You see, these Muslims are so confused. They are so in denial, right? Muslims are nothing but a victim of this huge confusion, huge deception which they call Islam. You know, when you are a fake prophet and you create, you create this man-made cult, of course there's going to be a mass confusion. There is no scholar who will agree with another scholar, right? Any eye of the Quran, any hadith, there will be many opinions, different opinions from scholars. Why? Because Islam is nothing but a mass confusion. Right? And when you ask them a simple question, they will jump, right? Like monkeys. You saw him, right? You heard what he was saying, right? He was jumping all over the place. Abdul, easy, easy on the gut, easy on the hashish. Stop smoking the pipe. Lay down the pipe. Muslims. What's wrong with these Abduls, man? They can't even answer one simple question. <sighs> Guys, let us continue. You know, sorry for um, basically stopping uh, the teaching. You know, because this guy was saying, okay, play the video. Okay, we play the video, right? Now he's, he's, he's gone, he's gone, eh? he, he vanished, he knew he got spanked again, so he vanished, okay. And uh, I was watching the live chat, he was talking about Christianity and whatnot, while we are playing his debate with me, right? He was again all over the place. This guy is really suffering huge from Abdulism, and we know that Abdulism kills brain cell. Truly, truly, I tell you, Islam does kill brain cells right muslims you are truly in denial please leave this satanic cult because it's causing you schizophrenia <laughs> abdul halika schizophrenia abdul <laughs> yeah so anyway let us continue let it go let it go guys if we go do deuteronomy 18 Verses 15 to 22. Uh, this is the NIV. Let me switch it up. I like the KGV. But that's me, right? I mean... Uh, okay, KGV. Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 to 22. King James Version. Right? A lot of people are asking me, Rob Christian, why are you not teaching from the Bible? Well, I can't teach about the Bible, but my speciality is spanking Islam and the Abdulism of the Islam, the Muhammadans. That's my speciality. What can I do? Blame Allah for putting me on this earth, teaching me Arabic to spank Islam, the fake prophet of Islam, and, and the Abduls are suffering from Abdulism. What can we do? That's my speciality. But, you know, I can teach also about the Bible, so now and then. So let us go to the Bible, guys. This is Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 to 22. Read with me, guys. Muslims claim, before I start reading, Muslims claim that chapter 18, 18 is about Muhammad. Let us see if this is about Muhammad, guys. They call this a prophecy about the coming of Muhammad. 
Read with me. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. Uh oh. Muslims, when you say that Deuteronomy 18:18, 18, 18, this verse, that it's talking about Muhammad, that a prophet will be raised, why are you not starting with 15? Start here. I mean, we have something called context in the Bible. The Bible, from the first chapter, from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, it's one complete story, right? So why are you not starting there? So here it says that a prophet will be raised from among thee, who are thee, the Israelites, their brethren. Now question, question, are the Muslims from among the Israelites? Was Ishmael an Israelite? No. Why no? Because Ishmael was the slave son of Hagar. Abraham kicked him out together with his slave Hagar, right? His mother. And the prophethood continued with the blood of Isaac, right? Isaac all the way to Moses and all the way to Jesus, right? So it was over for Ishmael from that moment, right? So it says here from among, this is in the time of who? Of Moses, right? So we are talking about the Israelites, not the Ishmaelites, right? So from among the, thy brethren, is Muhammad an Israelite? When you ask Muslims, they will say no. Astaghfirullah. Allah forbid, right? Astaghfirullah. Muhammad is a Muslim. He's a slave of Allah. He's a Muslim. He's not an Israelite. Right? He's not a Yahudi. <laughs> That's how they call the Jews. Yahudi. Right? So, here, you just spanked yourself, Muslim. When you say <laughs> 1818 is talking about Muhammad, you just spanked yourself. Let us continue. Let it go. Let it go. Like unto me, unto him you shall hearken, according to all that thou desired of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I die not. So basically here the, the Israelites were asking that they are in fear. They didn't want to hear the voice of the Lord because they were scared to death. Whenever God spoke, they used to fall down and they were trembling in fear. So here basically the Israelites is, are asking uh, the prophet, in this case Moses, to uh, to ask God to not speak directly to, to them because they are scared to death whenever he uses his mighty voice, right? That's basically the context of this story. And let the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. Then it continues, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Again, the Israelites. So how in the world are you telling us that this is about Muhammad? You truly Muslims have no clue. You have no honor. You have no dignity, right? Yeah, astaghfirullah, brother. Muhammad is not a Israelite. It says here from their brethren. Their brethren are the Israelites. You see how they are suffering from Abdulism, guys? How in the world are you quoting chapter 18, 18 from the book of Deuteronomy? It's actually spanking Muhammad, right? It shows that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. And if we continue, guys, let me continue to verse 20. Guys, pay attention, please. When they, whenever they quote 18, don't forget it about 20. Here's why. But the prophet, watch. The prophet, who you call, for example, they call Muhammad a prophet. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name. Whose name? In Jehovah. Right? Jehovah. So, is Allah Jehovah? No, Allah is not Jehovah. Right? Show me the word Jehovah or the name Jehovah in the 99 names of Allah. You can't. <laughs> it's a different God, right? So, if you speak in, an, in a different name who is not Elohim, who is not Jehovah, then which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So guys, you know what this verse is saying? 
according to this verse, if a prophet speaks in a different name of any God than the God of the Holy Bible, who is Jehovah, that prophet shall die. And in that time, if Muhammad actually lived in the time of Moses, Moses himself would have ordered his men and he would have stoned Muhammad to death by stoning because that was the punishment right Moses himself and his men would have picked up stones and they st started to throw stones at Muhammad's face a death sentence for Muhammad so you should thank you Muslims your Abdulism never ever ever in your lives go oh, Deuteronomy 1820 right you are basically showing us that Muhammad is a false prophet and on the same time you are showing us that Moses would have picked up stones together with the Israelites to stone your fake prophet. So thank Allah that Muhammad was not living in the time of Moses. Right? He would have been stoned to death. <laughs> so never ever quote Deuteronomy 18, 18 because it will be used against you and your prophet, your fake prophet in the court of law. Guys, use this information. Whenever they go to Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, show them that Muhammad is not an Israelite. And because he spoke about You know, when he was quoting the satanic verses, these are the mighty cranes, their intercession is hoped for. Remember the satanic verses teaching from that other day that I was teaching about? Muhammad delivered the satanic verses from the devil, from Satan. He gave them to the pagan Quraysh, right? So he did speak about idols. He bowed down towards the idols. He prostrated. He did sujood in front of the idols of Mecca, the pagan idols, right? And Allah was silent that day. The Gharaniq, yes, exactly. Sujood, yes, prostration. So Muhammad did an act of worship. He prostrated in front of Allah al Uzza wal Manad. Right? And you can find it in the Quran. Right? So Muhammad would have been stoned to death at the hands of Moses and his men. <laughs> right? So you Muslims are truly in denial. You are truly in denial, right? Using biblical verses that are actually very bad for Muhammad. Very, very bad for Muhammad. The shirk, yeah. You're showing us that your prophet is nothing but a fake prophet. And he would have been stoned to death at the hands of Moses and his men. So let us continue, guys. If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 5777. Let me give you the link. Copy this link, guys. Use it, bookmark it, whatever what needs to be done. If we go there, let us read. I don't want to read the entire Hadith for you because it's really long. But basically, this is talking about... Uh, when Muhammad got, got poisoned in Khaybar. You remember Khaybar, guys? Till today, Muslims go on the streets, for example, Palestine. They go on the streets and they say, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud, Jeshu Muhammad, Sawfa Ya'ud. Oh, Khaybar, Khaybar. So they are remembering the Jews, how they poisoned the fake prophet of Islam, right? In Khaybar. Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud. Jeshu Muhammad Sofiyad. So basically, Khaybar Khaybar, O Jews, the, uh, the army of thugs of Muhammad will, will come back, right? <laughs> That's what they are saying on the streets, right? So, so Muhammad is basically asking here, if I ask you something, will you tell me the truth? They replied, yes. So they replied, yes, we will tell the truth. He asked, Muhammad asked, have you put the poison in the roasted sheep? So Muhammad is saying, did you put poison in the sheep that you gave me to eat? They replied, yes, we did. Right? He then asked, what made you do that? So what made you poison me? 
is Muhammad asking? They replied, they replied, we intended to learn if you were a liar, in which case we could be relieved from you. And if you were a prophet, then it will not harm you. So if you are actually a prophet, right? If you are truly a prophet, Allah will protect you from the poison and you will not get poisoned according to the Jews here, right? Did you catch it, guys? Are you still with me? Give me a one if you're still with me, guys. Did you catch what is happening here? So Muhammad is actually asking them, why did you put poison in the sheep? And they are, ask, they are answering, yes, we did it. We did poison you. And we did that to know if you're a liar or not. If you are a fake prophet or not, right? And if you are a true prophet, the poison will not harm you. So guys, let's see if Muhammad that day, that morning, if he did eat his seven ajwas, right? Remember the story about the seven ajwa? Muhammad is saying, if you eat seven ajwa in the morning, poison and black magic will not harm you. So guys, let us see if Muhammad actually listened to his own advice and he was, if <laughs> he was a liar or not, right? So let's see if the Jews were right about him, right? They knew he's a liar. He's a scam, right? Let's see, guys. This is, again, Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Guys, we always say it three times because Muhammad did everything three times, right? So we do it so that the Muslims will get notified, right? Muhammad, every time he goes somewhere, guys, he said, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum. I think Muhammad was suffering from a disorder. He was really mentally ill, right? Salaamu Alaikum, Salaam. I mean... What kind of guy is this guy? Doing everything three times, right? <laughs> this is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 4428. 4428. Let me give you the link. Guys, please help me to help you save those links. Use them for your benefit. Use them to save those poor victims that we call Muslims. They are actually the victims of this dark satanic sex cult. Death cult, right? So read with me. Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment, in his sickness, in which he died, used to say. So Muhammad actually died from the poison. Read with me. Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. Which food? That poisoned food, right? Remember? <laughs> so Muhammad was poisoned at Khaybar. This is why they say on the streets, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud. Jeshu Muhammad Sofa you know? They are still remembering the Jews, how they poisoned their fake prophet. At this time, I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison. Guys, pay attention. There is nothing called as if. Right? There's nothing called as if. Right? There's nothing called as if here in the text, right? It actually says. This, so remove this part, it says, I feel my aorta is being cut off from the poison. You know, they have to deceive you in their translation, right? They have to do that. Let me see. Did I? Yeah, here. This is the part. I copied it from the Arabic, right? This part. And I put it for you in Google. Does it say as if? No, it says, this is the time I have found aortic interruption. This is, what can we do? This is a Google Translate, but you'll get the idea. There's nothing called as if. So they have to put as if to deceive non-Arabic speaking people, right? Deception or top of deception when they translate. So it says, I feel my aorta is being cut off from the poison, right? So actually, Muhammad is a liar because he forgot his seven ajwa, right? And he was poisoned. <laughs> Abduls, Abduls, why are you in denial? Clearly, Muhammad is a liar, a scam, and there is nothing called Allah to protect him from the poison, right? There is nothing called Allah to protect him from the poison. And why did Muhammad not follow his own advice? If you eat seven ajwa in the morning, no poison or black magic will affect you, right? 
So clearly Muhammad needs to start to listen to his own advice next time. Oh wait, he's dead? He's, he's rotting in Medina somewhere, right? And he died a miserable death, right? It's according to Aisha. The proof is in front of you. You know, Muhammad became very sick from the poison and he died from that poison. But Shia Muslims, guys, Shia Muslims who reject Sahih al-Bukhari, they will say it was Aisha together with Hafza, his other wife, right? By the command of Abu Bakr, they used to put poison in, in Muhammad's mouth to kill Muhammad. It was an inside job from the own family of Muhammad who killed him. According to the Shia, this is why they curse Hafza and Aisha and Abu Bakr and Omar, right? Because they say it was an inside job to, for Abu Bakr to get the command from Muhammad so that Ali cannot become the first caliph, right? So Islam is all over the place. They, can e they cannot even agree who killed Muhammad, who got rid of Muhammad. But Muhammad was actually poisoned and he died from the poison. Did you catch it? But the ignorant Abduls, they say, no, no, Muhammad did not die from, from poison. Well, the proof is in front of you. <laughs> let us actually see, guys. Let us investigate who killed Muhammad. Right? You know, when you ask Muslims, does Allah actually plan everything in life? They say yes. Allah made Adam to sin against him. He put the sin on Adam. Adam was actually not to be blamed. It was Allah's plan for Adam to commit sin, right? Everything is Allah's plan. Allah loves to deceive whoever he wants to deceive. Allah misguides who wants to meet. He misguides. So actually, there is no free will in Islam. Take notes, Muslims. There is no free will in Islam. You are nothing but a puppet in the hands of Allah. So let us investigate who killed Muhammad. Was it Allah? Was it the Jews? Let's see. If we go to chapter 69, ayah 44, let me read the Arabic for you first. Walau taqawwal alayna ba'da al-aqawil Let me go to the next verse. La khadna minhu bil yameen and to the third verse thumma laqata'na minhu al-watin now what does this say guys in the English translation? Let me scroll back. Take notes. This is chapter 69, ayah 44. It says in English, And if he, who, the prophet, Muhammad, had invented false saying concerning us, so if Muhammad actually was fabricating something against Allah, in this case false ayahs, or he lied or whatever, what would Allah do? If we can continue reading, we, Allah, should, would assuredly have taken him by the right hand. So Allah would grab Muhammad and spank him around, basically. And what does Allah next say? And then severed his life artery. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So who actually did cut the aorta of Muhammad? Muhammad is saying, I feel that my aorta is being cut off from the poison. So who did that to Muhammad? It is Allah. Take notes. Take notes, guys. So it is Allah who killed Muhammad. Right? You see it? The aorta. Al-Watin. The life artery. Uh-oh. So guys, it was Allah's plan to kill Muhammad. To cut off the aorta of Muhammad. By Allah's will. So Muhammad actually invented ayahs, fabrications, lies against Allah, right? And if he had invented false saying, I mean the proof is in front of you. Concerning us, concerning who? Allah. We assuredly had taken him by the right hand and then severed his life artery, his aorta. Cut off his aorta. Al-Watin. Guys, another name for aorta in Arabic is Al-Watin, right? Aorta. And the proof is in front of you. Guys, take notes. This is 69 verses 45. 45. Let me give you the link. Bookmark it, please. This is really important. This is damaging. All right? Guys, don't forget to subscribe. If you like our teaching, 
Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button like it's possessed by Jin, and click also on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Also, please keep us in your prayers. As you see, guys, we are pu putting our lives in the front lines to expose this filthy satanic death cult. Right? Also, keep our beloved admins in your prayers too. They are always doing an amazing job. So, guys, as you see, Muhammad is actually a false prophet. And who killed Muhammad? Allah killed Muhammad. Allah cut off the aorta of Muhammad. So, it was Allah's inside job. Right? It was Allah's inside job. Allah killed Muhammad. Don't blame me. These are your books, Muslims. Guys, let us continue. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> this is Hadith Sunan Abi Dawood. Hadith number 1531. Sunan Abi Dawood. Let me give you the link. Sunan Abi Dawood. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Hadith. Among the most excellent of your, fri of your days is Friday. So invoke many blessings on me that day. Guys, there is nothing called blessings in the Arabic. There is nothing called blessings in the Arabic hadith, right? Here. This is the word. If we go to Google, peace be upon him, right? Allah is praying on Google. It says as salati. You see the word? You see what it is? What is it? Guys, what is it? Is it blessing? No, no, it's prayer, right? Did you catch it? So they are lying in the translation. Anyway, let it go. So, so invoke many prayers on me. <laughs> Ask Allah to pray for, <laughs> for me. Allah is praying on Muhammad on that day for your blessings, for your prayers, nothing called blessings again, will be submitted to me. Wow. So the praise of Allah will be submitted to Muhammad. Is this, not, is, is this not worship of Muhammad, guys? This is clear shirk. Muslims have actually need to worship Muhammad. Allah needs to pray for the sake of Muhammad. To who does Allah pray? Huh, Muslims? Oh, wait, you are still in denial, all right? Muslims, you are still in denial? No. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let it go. So they, the companions, asked, Messenger of Allah, how can our prayers, there is nothing called blessings, how can our prayers be submitted to you when your body has decayed? So the Abduls who are suffering from Abdulism, the companions, they are asking, how can our prayers be submitted to you when your body has decayed, when your body will rot, basically. If you die, your body will start to rot. He, Allah is praying on him, said, Allah has prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of Prophet. You filthy liar. Guys, if we go to the Bible, the Bible is clear when it says that the bodies of the Prophets will actually decay. So Muhammad is lying about the Prophets here. See it? He is lying from the back of his mouth. Disgusting lies. What did, what did Allah say? <laughs> I will cut off your your aorta, Muhammad, if you lie, right? See, Allah is the one who got rid of Muhammad. Oof, oof, oof. Right? Allah killed Muhammad by cutting off his aorta. Right? Because Muhammad was nothing but a scam. Right? Don't blame me, blame Allah. So, according to Muhammad, according to Muhammad, Allah for, forbids the earth from consuming the bodies of the prophets. So the Bible d contradicts that, right? The Bible contradicts that, contradicting Muhammad. And if we go to the Islamic source in Tarikh al-Kabir 1 31, you can read with me. 
Al Abbas, the paternal uncle of Prophet Muhammad, entered Muhammad's room after the death of Muhammad. Pay attention, guys. Before his burial, before the burial of Muhammad, so Muhammad died, guys, as his body remained there for three days. So the body of Muhammad remained for three days as the people were too busy to bury him, as all of them were engaged in debates of Al Thaq. Thaqifah council of choosing a ruler caliph of Yathrib to succeed him. So basically the Muslims were too busy doing business, right? They were too busy to choose the first caliph. Who be and who was the first caliph, guys? Who was the first caliph to the audience? Who became the first caliph? Guys? Who became the first caliph? Abu Bakr, thank you. So Abu Bakr became the first caliph in Medina. So once Al Abbas, so the uncle of Muhammad, guys pay attention, entered the room, he immediately put his hands at once at his nose. Why? Because he started to smell something really bad. And said to the guarded man outside, bury your friend Muhammad fast, for his body began decomposition just like the rest of human beings. So Muhammad's body actually did decay, it started to rot, and you know what happens, right? After three days, because of the gas in the stomach of the dead body, it will fart, it will smell. Farting, right? Muhammad started to fart, his body started to fart after three days. Gas, yeah. What did Muhammad say? You see? So, so his own uncle, so his own uncle just spanked the fake prophet of Islam. Right? Al Abbas, the uncle of Muhammad. Bury your friend Muhammad fast, for his body began decomposition, just like the rest of human beings. Boom! You filthy liar, Muhammad. Now I understand why Allah cut off the aorta of Muhammad. This is the reason why. Because he was nothing but a liar. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Muhammad busted again. Now guys, if we ask Muslims, are you allowed as a Muslim in, in the Abdulism Islam, are you allowed to kill women and children? Are you allowed as a Muslim to kill women and children? What will the answer be guys in the chat? What will they say, do you, you think? What will they say? Are you allowed as a Muslim to kill women and children? Sean K says yes. Irene says yes. That's, that's not true. Muslims will always say, no, you are not allowed. Yes, exactly. You are not allowed to kill women and children in Islam. And here is the Sheikh. Guys, this is Islam Q&A.info. Let me give you the link. Highly, highly, highly respected Salafi Sunni website. And the name of the Shaykh who is answering the question, Shaykh Muhammad Salih al Munajid, right? Shaykh Muhammad Salih al Munajid will answer the question. This is IslamQA.info, highly respected Salafi Sunni website. Now the Shaykh says, No one can believe that any person with religion or any mercy in his heart would split a pregnant woman's belly and take the infant out and kill it. Kill ch killing children or kill children one by one in front of their parents. Smear heads with axe or burn the, the living. Only a, So the Sheikh is saying, only a criminal with a heart harder than a stone which has no mercy. Now pay attention to this sentence. So according to the Sheikh, guys, you, you are truly a f dirty, filthy criminal if you kill women and children, right? These are not my words, these are the words of this sheikh. This is a sheikh, PhD sheikh from Al-Azhar, right? From the Al-Azhar University, number one university of Egypt, Cairo, Egypt, right? So he's saying you must be a truly criminal with a diseased heart, basically, and you have no mercy. Your, your heart is harder than stone if you kill children. You do, know, you, don't, you do not know Allah and does not believe in the hereafter would do such acts. Did you catch it? This is not me speaking. This is the Sheikh. Oh boy, oh boy, we're going to show this Sheikh 
that Muhammad is a dirty criminal. He, ha he has a heart of stone, harder than stone. Muhammad has no mercy and he does not know Allah and does not believe in the hereafter because he did actually do these crimes. Let me show you. This is not me. Let me give you the link. This is Sahih Muslim. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih Muslim. Right? Read with me. This is hadith number 1745a. Read with me, guys. It is reported on the authority of Sab Jantama that the Prophet of Allah, Allah praying on him, when asked about the women and children of the polytheist being killed during the night raid, said, They are from them. Right? You see that? So Muhammad actually w was killing children. Did you catch it? Women and children are being killed. What did the Sheikh say? Only a criminal with a heart harder than a stone, which has no mercy, does not know Allah, and does not believe in the hereafter would do such acts. Not my words, these are the words of the Sheikh of Islam. So, Muhammad is nothing but a dirty criminal. He does not know Allah, because he said they are from them. From the who? From the polytheists. So he allowed the killing of women and children. Boom. This is the nail again on the coffin of Muhammad. How many nails did we put on the coffin of Muhammad today, guys? How many nails? I, I stopped counting, guys, to be honest with you. Many nails today on the coffin of Muhammad. And Muslims, what did we say? They are still in the now. Right? To another hadith, let me give you this link too. In the chat. Copy them, guys, use them. This is a Sahih, Sahih, Sahih hadith from Sunnah Nabi Majah, volume 4, book 24, hadith number 2839. Right? Read with me. It was narrated, guys, are you still with me? Are you, it was narrated that Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, said, Sab bin Jattama said, the Prophet was asked about the polytheists who are attacked at night. So the Muslims were attacking the polytheists, the pagans, right? And their women and children are killed. He said, they are from among them. Kill them, it's okay. Kill the women and children. What did the Sheikh say? Only a criminal with a heart harder than a stone, who has no mercy, does not know Allah, and does not believe in the hereafter, would do such a So actually, Muhammad is a criminal. He does not know Allah. He is a pagan, according to this Sheikh. He is a dirty, filthy killer and a criminal. You see it? Not my words. These are the words of this Sheikh. Right? Let me give you the link. Do we have any Muslim? Huh? Guys, and we showed you how we spanked that Abdul during the call, right? That actually Allah does enter his creation. But Muslims are in denial and they will say, Allah does not enter his creation. But this shame Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Salah al Munajid, PhD Sheikh, he is quoting Al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Saying, the Lord Allah descends every night. He enters the creation because the heaven is the creation of Allah. You catch it? Let me give you this link too. So actually guys, by this, we just finished our teaching. If I missed your questions, guys, bear with me. It was not my intention because I cannot do teaching and answer questions in the chat at the same time, right? So today again, we prove to you, and that's the topic of today, that Muslims are in denial. So do we have any Muslim? Let me open up my Skype. Let me open up my Skype. Do we have a Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us live? I mean, we are live. Now, finally, you can end my career. You can refute me. You can silence me, right? Silence me. Right?
for the people who are saying sometimes, you Rob Christian, you really sound like Christian Prince. Well, the thing here is, guys, you need to understand that Christian Prince, me, and many other debaters, Arabic speaking debaters, we used to sit in one room, right? So this is why we sound the same. And you know, most Arabs actually sound the same. So that's the reason why sometimes I sound like CP, right? And it's an honor to sound like my older brother in Christ. It's an honor for me. I don't feel attacked. It's an honor to sound or be even close to CP. For me, he's one of the best. He's not the best because there are a lot of people who are really actually good, who, e who even started before Christian Prince. But he is really amazing. I really have high respects for it. Christian Prince. So it's an honor to sound like CP, right? It's an honor for me, right? People who don't know us, you know, they think I started recently to teach or, you know, that's not true. I'm doing this for 15 years, guys, right? And I used to stay with Christian Prince on Paul Talk in the same room, you know? So when you speak and say, you know, Rob Christian, you need to develop your own style. You have no clue what you're talking about. You don't know me, right? <laughs> you have no clue what we had to deal in those old school days, right? What, what, why we are sounding the same, right? Why we are using the same words, right? That's why. And again, it's an honor when people are comparing him with Christian Prince. Any Abdul? Any Abdul? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Ustaz? Guys, last time there was a, I don't know if it's a woman, it's a, it's a man, I don't know. His name or her name was Born Again. She was, she was in the live chat in my last teaching. She was in the live chat. She was saying I was deceiving my audience. And she was talking about the following chapter. Let me go to the chapter. Let me show you, you know, you truly have no shame when you call me a liar or a deceiver. It was, she was talking because, you know, I can't always see the chat. So when I miss something, sometimes I go watch, rewatch the video and you don't forget, you can see the chat, right? So you need to wait at least 30 minutes for YouTube to process everything, right? To process it. Uh, yeah, this was the, the, this was the verse. You know, YouTube needs 30 minutes to process everything and to show the live chat again. So basically you can use the live chat, you can see what was discussed. So I was scrolling down the live chat of my last teaching and I was seeing this person calling me a deceiver. You truly have no shame, you have no dignity when you do that, right? We are putting our lives on the line to expose this death cult, this satanic cult, and you dare to call me a deceiver? You have truly no shame. I challenge any Muslim to show me where I lied. So I was discussing uh, this verse, guys. Chapter 19, Surah Al-Maryam. Pay attention, guys. Chapter 19, Ayah 33. And it says here, basically it's talking about Jesus, right? In his cradle. So Jesus is a baby. Let me type it. Jesus is a baby talking here. Right? He's saying, and peace on me the day I was born and the day I will die, and the day I am raised alive. So Jesus is saying, he will be born, or he, was, he is born, he will die, he's talking as a baby, guys. So here, the crucifixion is actually confirmed in the Quran. Peace, the day I am born, he's speaking as a baby, the day I will die, right? And the day I will be raised alive. So here, Jesus is confirming his, him being born, his death and resurrection. Did you catch it? Right, let me give you the link. So she said, she said, Rob Christian, 
you're a deceiver. You need to show also verse 34. Well, here it is. It's in front of you. That is Jesus, the son of Mary. The word of truth. Actually, this verse, she, she was calling me a deceiver. Why I'm not showing this verse, 34. I was showing this and I did this, guys. I made it big so she could not see this. So that people can see it better, right? So if you make it smaller and you can see the verse, both verses, both ayahs, it's actually even more damaging because here Jesus is called the word of truth. Kalimat Allah. He is the truth. Now, question. What is one of the 99 names of Allah? It's Al-Haq, right? Let me type it in a text. Al-Haq, meaning it's the truth. So <laughs> this is even more worse. Right? You should thank me for not showing you verse 34. <laughs> Guys, I'm a deceiver. Rob Christian is a deceiver. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> oh, man. And he, not, il, not only is Jesus Allah, right? He is Al-Haq and he is the eternal word of Allah about which they are in this view. So they are actually confused about it. So the people who do not believe that Jesus is Allah, he is the truth, right? He is the word of Allah. You are a basically a hypocrite. You are a munafiq. So who is deceiving who? Abdul? You know, these people actually, you know, I think she's a, because her name was, or his name was, burn again. This is nothing but a Muslim in disguise using a Christian name. But at the same time, this Abdul forgot that according to his prophet, you are not allowed to copy Christians. Aha! Astaghfirullah. You are not allowed to copy Christians. Right? Calling me a deceiver. You have truly no shame. You have no dignity. You have no honor. Right? So it's even more worse for you if I show you the next verse. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So I wanted to uh, address that. And guys, if you want to see how she was calling me a deceiver, you can go and watch the last live show. In the chat, you will see her calling me a deceiver for not showing 1934. Right? Yeah, yeah, Marcus Tembeck, that's normal. Muslims will do everything to deceive. So they will use our names. I, my name, guys, on Discord, my name have been used many times. They are using my name, fake Muslims, right, doing that. They are using fake names. Even copy my, uh, my uh, profile picture, acting like me, talking garbage, right? That's, you know, when they don't have the truth, they will use deception. And you, and you need to understand Muslims are 24-7 at war. And war is deception, right? War is deception. So they are allowed to use taqiyya. Remember what the Quran says? You are allowed to lie. When? In war, you are allowed to use taqiyya. You are even allowed to use taqiyya with your own wife and family. Right? So you can even lie to your own wife. So guys, you can never ever trust a Muslim. My mother, because I'm from the Middle East and we have lived under heavy persecution, right? Heavy. I cannot describe it in words. But when I was a kid, my mother used to te teach me this th very important thing in life. Never. My son, she, she told me, my son never ever trust a Muslim. Don't trust him with your money or with your women. Right? Don't trust Muslims with your money and with your women. Because they will steal your money and they will steal your wives. Right? So guys, by this, as I taught, taught you today, thanks the Lord. I think it was really important live show and we prove to you that Muslims are in denial right they are nothing but victims of this satanic cult and when you don't have the truth you will be in denial 
Yeah, they will steal your KFC. Yeah. You cannot even trust them with a delicious chicken from KFC. They will eat it. All right. Rush hour. Rush hour. If you have the knowledge and the color, you have the knowledge and the courage, call me. All right? Call me. You're an Abdul, right? Call me. Do we have any Muslim? We have at least two dislikes, right? We have two dislikes. That means we have at least two Muslims. Call me. Uh, skeleton is asking me, Rob Christian, do you agree with CP that Allah is moon god? I think that Allah just means al ilah. No, uh, Skeleton, CP is right. And you are wrong, Skeleton. Let me show you. You are wrong and CP is right. Here's why. Here's why. When you ask Muslims, guys, pay attention, please. Are you with me? Give me one if you are with me. Because I'm trying to answer the question of this gentleman skeleton. Okay. Now, if you ask Muslims, what is the name of your God? They will say it's Allah, right? Do you see it? Bismillah. Now, okay, and then we ask him, what is Al? They say it means the, right? The, like this. Okay, okay, fine. So Al means the. Then you are left with the last two letters, La. So the name, guys, pay attention. The name of the Islamic God is the La. So it's not Ila, it's Dila. So CP is right, my friend, and you're wrong. And here's the proof from the second verse. It says Li La. Right? Li La. Now, the first letter, Li, means four. Right? Alhamd Lillah. So basically, all praise is for Allah. So, all Hamd, Alhamd, means the praise is for, for, li, la, again, la. So the last two letters, la. So the name of the Abdulism moon idol is la. So CP is right and you're wrong, my friend. Okay? So when CP talks, you listen, right? He knows what he's talking about. This is why I really love my brother in Christ, CP. He's really a dear brother of mine. Do we have any more questions? Do we have Muslims? We are here, guys. This is the Q&A session, period. We are here to answer your questions. And if there are Muslims, they will get the advantage because my Skype is open. You can call me live. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Would someone maybe say in Texas? Do you have any questions? Zuk midich midich. Actually, Muhammad he had no teeth, right? Muhammad he had no teeth, right? So here's the one million dollar question: Can you try to talk, try to talk, and give? Ayahs of the Quran without your teeth. How, how? Let me try to close my mouth without teeth and say, <coughs> Can you do that? How did he give? And that's basically in the beginning of his so called prophethood. How can you, how can you give ayahs for the Quran if you don't have any teeth? <laughs> so, you tell me, my friend. Allahu Akbar. Allah knows best how Muhammad gave uh, the satanic verses. I mean, uh, the Quran, the Quran, to his companions. You tell me. So you know, Islam is really a big confusion.
right? So he was saying blah blah, yeah, basically, without teeth. Can you form words without teeth, especially Arabic words? I mean, Arabic is one of the most difficult languages in the world, guys. Try to make a right sentence without your, let's say, front teeth. It's not possible, right? I don't have teeth, right? So the to toothless prophet of Islam. Lord have mercy. And why, why was Allah hiding when Muhammad lost his teeth? Where is Allah when you need him? Where is Allah when you need him? Allah not protecting Muhammad from poison. Why? Because actually it was Allah who cut off the aorta as we showed you of Muhammad. So Muhammad was not protected by Allah because Allah was tired of Muhammad. You know, he wanted to get rid of him. So he seized him by the hand and he cut off his aorta. You know, Allah, even Allah was tired of Muhammad, of his deception and lies, right? Even Allah was tired of Muhammad. Yeah, I think Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad was using Morse code, right? Muhammad was using Morse code when he gave the Quran to, to the Abduls, right? Right? That was the ABC, by the way. <laughs> Let's see if we can answer another question. Does anyone in the Quran say that Muhammad certainly entered paradise? Does anyone in the Quran say that Muhammad certainly entered paradise? Well, I hope a Muslim can show me that. Is there a Muslim who can show us that Muhammad actually entered paradise? I don't think there is an ayah like that. Actually, Muhammad, as we showed you, his aorta is being cut off by Allah. So, would Allah allow Muhammad to be in, in Jannah? No. And even Abu Bakr said, even with one foot in Jannah, I still fear the Mecca, which is the deception of Allah. And I believe that Muhammad once said, uh, that he did not know what Allah would do to him. Right? Muhammad said, I'm only a warner, right? Muhammad said, I'm only a warner. Right? So, who knows? Do we have any Muslim? Huh? Well, skeleton, to be honest, I don't care about politics, right? Jesus, when he said, give to what Caesar is to Caesar, give to God what is God. From that moment on, Jesus himself separated church, religion, basically from state, right? Religion from state. So... I really don't care about politics. I don't care. For me, the most important thing is we must behave like Christ. Right? If we are actually true followers of Christ, we have to behave like Christ. Be as perfect as possible uh, like Christ. Listen to the commands of Christ. And politics, you know, Christians and politics don't go hand in hand, to be honest with you. Yes, we are allowed to defend ourselves. I mean, if a Muslim comes uh, to hurt me or hurt my family, I will make sure to hurt, to hurt him first, right? Self-defense is biblical. But we are not allowed to go on offense, right? We are not allowed to start, but we are allowed to do self-defense. And about politics, I really don't want to go there, right? So that's basically it. Raymond is asking, Shal Rob Christian, Shalom, Shalom to you, my friend. 
Muslims say the nature of Allah is Zad. Could you please explain what Zad actually is? Thank you for your great teaching. What do you mean by Zad? I don't know what Zad. What is Zad? What do you mean by that? Zad? Nature of Allah is Zad? What do you mean? Zad. I don't know what Zad. What is that? What is that Zad? I have no clue what you mean by Zad. Can you translate it for me? Is there any verse in the Quran that describes Muhammad as holy? No. Muhammad is actually described as a warner. He's only a warner. He came to warn people. That's it. The one who is holy is Jesus. The only person who is holy as a male is Jesus. Right? And we showed you. Let me go back. Uh, what was that? Was No. Pay, pay attention, guys. Let me show you. We showed you from chapter 19 that Jesus is actually Allah, right? Jesus is Allah. Why? Because he's the eternal word of Allah and he is Al-Haq. He is the truth. Remember? He is the truth. And one of the 99 names of Allah is the truth. So, <laughs> right? But what, but I, what I can show you and someone is, uh, no, I don't want to go there. I want to show you. I was talking about it in a different teaching, earlier teaching. We showed you that Muslims are actually commanded. And for me, that's really damaging. If you are a Muslim, you should not stay a split second in Islam. And here is why. If you go to the Arabic, here is chapter 48, ayah 9. وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ so according to this ayah, guys, you have to worship Muhammad. Right? You have to worship Muhammad. And you have to basically, this is bad translation, but you have to do tasbih for Muhammad. That means glorify Muhammad. This is a really, really bad translation. Let me switch the translation. I hope this translation is better. Celebrate his praise. Again, a false translation. Why are these people lying when they translate, man? Truly, they, these people do, no, do not have any shame when they translate the Quran. Let me see. Ah, here. Guy. Look, guys. Why is this referring to Muhammad? Because according to grammar rules in the Arabic, the last person in the sentence, everything that comes after the last person, so these words, this word, this word, oh, everything counts only for the last person, which is in this case, the Rasul, right? The Prophet, the Messenger. So you have to honor the Prophet, you have to respect the Prophet, you have to assist the Prophet and you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Right? You see how they are lying in the text? I challenge any Muslim to show me where I'm lying. Clearly, the proof is in front of you. According to Arabic grammar rules, the last person, everything that comes after, Bukratan wasila counts for the last person. And that's, I didn't create the grammar rules, guys. I didn't create them. That's what we have been taught in school. Right? Boom. So here we have clear blasphemy. You have to, you have to, you are commanded to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. So when Muhammad said, I'm only a war warner, he lied. And this is why Allah, guys, uh, this is why Allah uh, was tired of Muhammad's lies and he cut off his aorta, right? Allah was tired of the lies of Muhammad and he decided to cut off the aorta of Muhammad. Guys, I really have to go. I think... We had a nice teaching today.
Uh, sorry if I can't answer all the questions. Uh, if you have a question, you can ask it the next time. So don't forget about your question and we will answer it for you for sure next time. I really thank you for watching. Also, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. God bless you and your families. Lord willing, we will see each other again in the next live show. Pray for us. Keep us in your prayers. Thank you, admins. Keep also the admins in your prayers. They are always doing an amazing job. Don't forget to download our videos. Help me to help you. Right? If you can save one Muslim who is nothing but a victim is this, in this satanic cult, if you can save just one, that's already great, right? Because these Muslims are nothing but victims. They are blind, they are deaf, and they cannot hear or speak. When you ask a Muslim one question, he cannot answer it, right? Because they, those people have no clue. They don't know about Islam, right? They have no clue. They only follow what their deceivers, their imams are telling them. God bless you. God bless you, families. And see you, Lord willing, next time. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is nothing but a scam. He is a fake prophet who was fabricating ayahs that he called the Quran. God bless you and see you again soon. Bye-bye.